All right, thank you. Okay, my name is Kara Cleveland and I am the Professional Development Office Supervisor. And we are very happy today to have Lisa Jones with EBSCO here to, just, to do some more training to help us understand uh, things that maybe we've never thought we could have any input into. Uh, and so she's been showing us a lot of cool little tips. Um, so this is our What's Up Wednesday series. We do one every, uh, a tech one every second Wednesday of the month. And then we just do a normal library topic or whatever the last Wednesday of the month. Uh, the only other thing, I'm just going to cut this short because I want to make sure that Lisa has plenty of time. Uh, if you have uh, anything that you want to just send to us, uh, the host, you can always uh, choose host and panelists in the chat. But right now, uh, I would like for everyone to choose everyone. So if you are going to share something, everyone can see it. And I will, at the end of the um, presentation, I will put uh, a link in the chat for your certificate. Okay, Lisa, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you. Thanks, Kara. Um, oh, we get a certificate after this? I didn't know that. Okay, let me share my screen here. And good morning, everyone. Um, Lisa Jones here. I am the trainer for um, Indiana. So hopefully you've come to some of our other sessions or maybe you've come directly to some of my sessions that I have um, just publicly available for EBSCO or maybe we've done one-on-ones. But either way, I wanna welcome everyone. I appreciate your time this morning. And we are gonna be looking at EBSCO usage statistics. So I hope you have your coffee, tea, um, <laughs> Mountain Dew, whatever caffeinates you, because I will try to make it fun and exciting, but um, there's just some things that you can't do <laughs> or that are harder to do, I'll say that. Um, so Lisa, M, and Kara, you're going to be watching the chat, correct? And, um, and then letting me know if there's any questions. So just chime in. I'll, you know, I'll try to, I will definitely stop and say, any questions, but please feel free throughout the sessions to put your questions in the um, chat area. Or um, Kara, are do are they able to unmute if they'd like to or no? Uh, I, Lisa Meadows, I'm not sure how she has it set up. Can I do that? No, they are not able to unmute themselves, but if they raise their hand, then we can unmute them. Okay. Okay. So if you prefer to, to talk, thank you. Yeah, then you can raise your hand and then we'll unmute, but you, the chat is fine. Uh, and so, yeah, let's get started. All righty, so I'm just gonna leave the PowerPoint this way instead of turning it all the way on. And um, so, hi, it is Lisa Jones. Usually I'm in New Orleans and today I'm in Denver. I've been here for a while, just hanging out with my family because I am working from home. We always, the trainers for EBSCO always have worked from home. Um, typically we travel a lot too, and that would mean that I could typically come to Indiana at any time. Um, but as of now, you know, we're all still kind of grounded until things calm down in the world. Hopefully I'll be traveling again. Um, and so just remember that, that the trainers, you do have a trainer, it's me. Um, if in the future, when you have staff, um, you know, learning days or anything like that, a lot of times the vendor train, not just me, but maybe the vendor trainers can come in and um, kind of, you know, spice up the, <clears throat> the meetings. So we're going to look at uh, reporting today, but I kind of left this slide up just to be sure that we have a little bit of an introduction of really EBSCO admin itself. So a lot of people really don't do much with EBSCO admin, and that's actually okay because really what the majority of people do with EBSCO admin is what we're talking about today and it's starred here. So there's no reason, unless you have our discovery service, there is no reason for anyone to log into EBSCO admin on a regular basis. EBSCO admin controls um, your searching software that you get from EBSCO, uh, but you're not doing a lot of changes within that software unless again, you have our discovery service. And then that's a whole different conversation. Um, 
but uh, and if any of you ever, you know, if you want to need to have that conversation or want to know more about that, just put that in the chat at the end and I'll direct you to some other learning areas that we can have. Um, but today we're looking at the viewing usage statistics, okay? And even once you get into looking at your statistics, you can set up reports, automated reports, so then you're not even having to log into EBSCO admin ever, really, you know, or maybe once a year um, to change the reports that you're having sent. So lots of things that you can do. And what we're going to look at today is just the types of reports that are available to you. Um, not every single one, but just, you know, the kind of the main ones are we're going to run. So we'll run an, a database report. And that's really kind of the main report that I would say the majority of you would be interested in or maybe are it's necessary for you to have these statistics to report to other bodies. And that's usually the database usage. Are your databases being used? Which ones are being used? A lot of times you'll use that also for purchasing choices. So I realize that the majority of your databases, you're most likely getting through Inspire. But if you're purchasing any outside or if you're you know, with any other vendors too, if you're purchasing them, then that's where you're making your decisions on usage. And then if it's worth you know, kind of weighing that cost to usage then we are going to be looking at an interface report. I think this is going to be interesting for everyone. Um, we'll go more in, into that. Uh, we'll look at the graphical reports. You may not know that those are even there, and those are really easy. Those are just clickable reports that you can look at, um, and it gives you information like, what are people putting in the search box when they open up EBSCOhost? Or what are they putting in the search box when they're searching Explora? Um, so you can actually see uh, what your users are, are doing um, and what kind of search terms they're using and then kind of maybe change some of your, you know, if, if some of you are from academic libraries, you're doing um, library instruction, maybe change some of your instruction or maybe see that your instruction is working, correct? And the one thing I didn't do, I'll go ahead and ask everyone to put that in the chat is, what type of library are you from, if you don't mind? At least just like to know. So are you from public library, academic library? Um, maybe some of you snuck away from class and you're from K-12, or um, maybe even like a special library. So uh, then we will talk a little bit about counter. Uh, either you have to do that or you don't, but I want to I want to at least get you familiar with what counter is and then we can ask answer any questions throughout the session so let me re let's go live here um so i already have some questions i see the search terms just from your library or inspire so i think so for the most part when you log in and that's a great question to start out with so Inspire is one site, right? And so you go to that website and you use the links from Inspire. So if you're doing that, if your library is doesn't have its own links on its own web pages, um, then most likely you you won't be seeing, you know, when you, if you tried to get reports, you're not really going to be able to access those top level Inspire reports. For the most part, I would think, but I, I just still want everyone to try. And that's why I say, um, I didn't really say, well, oh, if, you know, if you only use Inspire, then, then you, you don't need to be here. Because I, what I really would ask everyone to do is after this session or within about a week from now, log into your EBSCO admin. I'll show you how to get in a login if you don't know how and run a report and look at those or even just look at your um, that top search terms report that I talked about. Just glance at that and see if, if you have usage in there because each one of you individually, when you log into EBSCO admin, you are in your own site and then that's how you're gonna capture. That's how you can then view what's really being used within your site. So the answer to Courtney's question of, are the search terms just from your library or all of Inspire, they would be just from your library. So whatever search terms you see are gonna be just from that, okay? 
So we'll talk a little bit more about that, but um, about how to log in and everything. But let me first start here. And I really want to then just show you a little bit first. So let me, I'm just gonna grab this real quick. <clears throat> And before I do that, I'll go ahead and say, when you log into admin, because maybe some of you haven't, I will show you how to get a login. When you log in, you're going to log in as your site. So it's just going to be one site here, whatever library you happen to be from. You're going to land on your main group, which is typically your live environment. And that's where all your stats are being logged. And then <clears throat> profiles are holders of databases. So groups are holders of profiles and profiles are holders of databases. And um, profiles are things like EBSCOhost. So when users click on one link, looking at academic search or looking at business source or looking at master file, they are using EBSCOhost and they are using one database. Profiles are also um, different, you know, they, they have different databases behind them and they could be also a different interface like Consumer Health Complete doesn't look like EBSCOhost when you open it up. It's a different interface. You're searching the database behind it. So an interface if, is what you use to search and the database is the, the content behind it. So EBSCOhost is an interface and um, Explora is an interface. So if you're using Explora, you're searching databases behind it. Um, and so you, you're looking really at usage on those, okay? So I'm gonna look at, I wanna stick to my EBSCO host, which now I've lost, which is here. <laughs> and I'm just gonna jump in this view changes real quick. Uh, this is just a quick way that you could grab and look at something to search real quick. So this is the way I'm gonna do it. So when a user, so let's say that on, you know, from your website, you have, and I'll you know, put that, uh, I'm gonna just open up master file. <clears throat> so when uh, master file is, I would say the number one research database or you know, kind of searching database for public libraries. And so I saw a lot of public libraries here. So I wanna use this one. So from your website, if you, if you have a user that clicks on master file, um, this right here is a session. So they've, they've opened up an interface. They've opened up something. They haven't done anything yet, right? So they haven't done a search. They haven't found any full text yet or downloaded an ebook. Um, but this right here would be counted as um, a session. So let's look at then if I do a search, and I'll do a search of something simple like that, gardening. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, looky there. Stop and smell the roses, a guide to mindful gardening. I like that. Um, so now I've done a search. So this would count as one session and one search, right? Um, if I click around, so let's just say if I say, oh, what's this? I want to read more about this. I'm hovering over. Maybe I'm adding it. So if I do any clicks on the page, um, that counts as page clicks. If I go into this, you know, so I'm just going to click into. <clears throat> into uh, usually what would be the let me click into the other one the first one. Um, usually this would be viewed as, um, let's see. So if I do this, this is an abstract view because I'm viewing the abstract here. If I do this, click into the title, I'm also then collecting an abstract view because we're assuming that yes, the user clicked into the title, the first thing they see is the abstract. Then as I scroll down, I'm also getting a full text view. This would be the full text HTML view. So this counts as a full text, I went in. And also if I click on the PDF here, or if I click on the PDF from the result list, I'm getting a full text view, which also falls under the PDF full text view. So there's some examples of what users are doing. Let me just do one more search. If I did a search of 
cryptocurrency. Now I'm still in the one session, but now I've done two searches. So you see how your sessions should be lower than your searches. And sessions really aren't counting that much, um, just that someone opened up something. But the searches really are saying that they're engaging, they're involved. And definitely when you see those full text usage, that means that you're getting them to, to data that is interesting um, that they need. So you're helping them to find what they're looking for. So any clicks that you see on the page or any full text views that you see, even abstract views, I think are very helpful because a lot of times I can get just enough information possibly within the abstract to get what I need and kind of move on, all right? So let's go in the back here and I wanna start with a database usage. So remember, we were looking at master file. I did some clicks around, I did some searches. And the first thing I wanna do is I just wanna go over to reports and statistics. And there is a lot of localized help within EBSCO admin. So once you get in here, start to remember that if you do have questions, there's a lot of help right here without leaving, you know, going to our help side or um, <clears throat> talking to our support. So when I first open this up, depending on the resources that you have, will determine what you have on this page. Um, <clears throat> you probably will have all of these because um, you do have full text finder, you know, through Inspire. Um, so most likely you will have the ebook area because you get a lot of ebooks from it from Inspire. Um, and you definitely will have this. This is kind of, you know, the default of everything. Um, these are just reports that I've recently downloaded. And then if I do have any reports that are scheduled, possibly I want them sent um, every quarter or once a month. Uh, then, you know, this will show me how to quickly access what I have scheduled. So you may even have additional tiles on this page if, if you have additional um, uh, products from us, like Flipster. If you're getting, if your school or library has Flipster, then, which is our magazine reader, um, then you may have that tile. So just kind of know that. Um, but let's go ahead. Really, this is the main area we want to go in when we're running reports. And this is when that where that database report will be. So standard usage reports. I'm just going to go in here. And remember, I said localized help. So number one, before I even run any reports, I can look at a tutorial to help me to remember things. I can also look at a glossary of terms. I've already thrown some terms out to you, sessions and searches and uh, PDF full text and HTML full text, like what, you know, what's going on here? So you can always refer to the glossary of terms when you run the report and you pull it up and I'll, I'll just, let me see if this is the one. Yeah, so here, so here's where um, I'm talking about here. <clears throat> When I run the report, I see sessions and search clicks and requests. And, you know, so all of these, <clears throat> excuse me, all of these uh, column headers are available to, to read more about and to better understand if you don't understand them when you do run the report um, within the glossary of terms here. Okay. Um, any questions at all, please put them in the chat. Thank you. So also the help look here. So I hover over the question and what is a database user report? It tells me here, it compiles database sessions, searches and turnaways and request logs. And so this kind of helps me. If I do this drop down and I say, well, oh, interface usage, huh? What's that? Then it's changes. So then it explains that. So lots of help here when you're in here and when you're um, looking at running reports. So what I did for the database usage report is I just left it here at database. Um, because I'm in at the consortia level, I actually see all the different sites that are underneath. Um, but you know, you're typically going to see only your site alone, right? <clears throat> Unless if you're a public library and you have multiple branches, um, you may see those multiple branches, or if you're an academic library, 
and you have, let's say, the main library and a law library, you may see a few sites under here, but typically you want to run it for all <clears throat> for your site. Um, at the state library level, if they were going to gather statistics for everyone, they would leave it at all. Um, but what I ran was just only on the state library usage. Okay, so I just picked it what it was, and then I um, I left all databases accessed because I wanted I really don't want databases that showed zero. But if you do have to count zero usage possibly in, in your reporting, or if you'd like to see what databases are getting zero usage, because maybe you, those are the ones you want to promote, um, then you can choose all subscribed, right? Um, if you're only looking for one or two databases, like you say, well, I really only want to see usage on this one. I just did a, a program on it. I want to see if it, the usage gained then you can actually choose all subscribed and select the view and then remove them, right? And then you can choose the one or two databases that you really want to hone in on. So the all subscribed would actually give you everything, but if you only want a few, then this is the way you would do it. And you would just say, so let's just say if I wanted to look at master file, then I'm going to pull my master file over and apply the changes. And then it tells me now I'm running still a database usage, but I'm only looking at one database at a time. So typically, though, when you're running the report, you want to see all of your databases were accessed. And that's what I did. So I can choose my reporting period on my, um, <clears throat> on my report that I'm going to show you more detailed in a minute. I, I just ran a month because I know there's going to be a lot of usage. Um, I just left it at the same analysis level. And remember, if you have questions, just hover over and say, okay, um, this is going to give me this level of report. If I want to use another analysis level, I can choose it and then I can hover over to better understand. Okay. But really, this is the main report people use. Once I do that, if I download the report, this is where I'm going to then be able to, to allow it to uh, manipulate it and, and save it then in Excel or in your chosen uh, spreadsheet uh, software. If you email it to yourself, <clears throat> then that is where you're really setting up then um, most likely when you email, you're not going to do one time. You're going to do more of the setting up of the how often do you want this email to yourself. And then this is where you're setting up the report for future use too. So it's going to email today, and then it's going to email from then on, on a quarterly, monthly, or yearly basis. Before you would do the email and, you know, set it up, you'd want to run a few to make sure that all the criteria was in there and that it's giving you what you want. And then you could go back in and set it up, and then you're done. Any questions about that? Let me know. For my use today, um, I'm just going to leave it at download because as soon as I do create report, <clears throat> it's going to move over to my downloaded reports. And so you can see that the one that I ran just right now is in progress. This will only take a few seconds. Boom, there it is. Um, I've already, I ran these two this morning. I've already downloaded and changed a little bit in my Excel, um, but not much. <clears throat> and so let's look at that. So here's my database report for uh, Indiana State Library. This is just the usage for January. So you can see kind of some metadata here at the top that gives me information. Um, I just added this color here so that I could easier, um, you know, review my databases. And, and I also, I believe, yeah, I also then uh, froze this pane so that when I start to scroll down, you know, that I'm not losing my column headers and so that I better understand. So a lot of this, I'm just gonna blow through this because the customer name is all the same, right? Customer ID, this is the ID that EBSCO kind of, you know, stamps on your, <laughs> stamps everywhere. And this is really kind of the nitty gritty of who you are, Indiana State Library and this ID, no one else has this ID. So when EBSCO wants to know who you really are, Maybe there's another Indiana State Library, but there's no other this one. Um, groups, remember I told you, are holders of profiles. For the most part, your stats 
for your library are going to all be within the main group. So this, <clears throat> because it's Inspire, there's other multiple groups that are getting a few hits. Do you see um, the sessions really are when someone opens up that interface and you can see that I sorted, that's how I sorted this whole list was by this session count because I just wanted to know, um, oh wait, I'm sorry, I'm, in the, I'm actually in the wrong, um, <clears throat> this is the next one I'm gonna show. This is the interface usage. So let me show you the database so we didn't get too far. Here it is here, sorry about that. Same thing though, you know, top level metadata, highlighted this, froze those panes. And then you can see <coughs> that my database list name is showing. And I'm sorry, I have to drink some water. So I see my database names, right? Um, this is an alphabetical list. I just left it that way as far as my sort value. Um, if you wanted to, you could do the same thing that I just did. Uh, for the other report, which was maybe you want to sort it by sessions or maybe you want to sort it by searches because then you would see the most used database, that, you know, at the bottom or at the top. And then you would say the least, you know, it'd be the from the most used to the least least used. So depending on how you want to view it is up to you. But here are all those database names and these should be familiar, so, you know, pretty familiar. These are all the databases that you get from EBSCO. We were just looking at master file. <clears throat> and here it is here. And so uh, we were looking at master file. We opened up, here's the sessions. So let me go up a little bit. I'll just show you this, I'll just keep it. So we were looking at, um, you know, we, when we opened up the database or when we opened up the interface of EBSCO host in master file, we gave this session a hit, right? Then we did a search, we did two searches. So we gave those searches a hit. Um, <clears throat> this total request is this total full text plus total link outs um, plus, add, plus HTML. So it like the total requests actually add up to all of the other requests that are in this line. So anything that's titled request, abstract, and, and HTML, and PDF, and ebook, this will add up to the total. So basically, this inner, you know, this database of master file has had some kind of request 16,000 times in this last month. <clears throat> the total full text, which would include HTML and PDF, um, would are that a you know 88,081. If you have linkouts, linkouts mean that um, the user's in the database, so they're in master file, um, but they're linking out somewhere. So maybe you have an ILL request form in there. Maybe you have a help link in there. Maybe you have um, an open URL resolver listed. So anyway, they're linking out to another area, but you're still, this is a good data to know about because they're still, um, you're still getting them hopefully to, you know, to where they need to go, right? With those link outs. Abstract, I showed you what that was. I'm viewing the abstract either from the result list or I'm viewing it when I click into the record. So that's how that gets counted. PDF full, uh, full text is just exactly what it is. Someone clicked on the PDF link and they opened up the PDF. HTML, same thing. I clicked on the record, I downloaded it, or I clicked on that HTML link. And then in master file, we would know that there's not really, in the database that I searched, there's no eBooks. Um, so this is okay for that to have eBook requests and eBook would be zero. That's what I would expect. And then um, this, I would just kind of discount that regular searches because that's what they're all gonna be. Um, and then here's those kind of, also I'll do, I will talk about this. So if you do ever see something that's smart link, what EBSCO does is you have a lot of databases from EBSCO. You have a lot of full text from EBSCO. And um, if full text is held in one database, but the abstract is held in another. So basically one database has a full text of a journal 
and the other database only has the um, bibliographic, or, you know, the top level bibliographic, they only have the abstract, then EBSCO says, well, I don't, the user doesn't care, you don't care, I'm going to go ahead and just put the PDF link in there and take them over even, you know, no matter what, like, no matter where the full text lives, if you see it on any database, you will actually have access to it. So hopefully that's, that makes sense. And then anytime you link out, like I said, if you do have ILL turned on in your library, or if you happen to have um, uh, an open URL resolver, which is taking users out to where you own the title, you would see those link out requests. Okay, so let's move on from this, let that sink in. It's not, I mean, once you kind of demystify some of these column headers, it really is pretty simple to go through. And for the most part, you most likely, what you really want to see is, are users looking at full text? Are users engaging with your databases? Um, are they getting PDF? Are they looking at abstracts? Um, are they linking out even? If that's, you know, if you do have ILL or any other link outs, okay? So I'm gonna just go back to standard usage. And the next one that I wanna show you, which I think is really useful for all you libraries that when you do, like let's say you say, well, I really do need to start learning more about admin. I wanna go in, I wanna understand it better. And the first thing you do is you log in and you look at this profile list and you see, oh, I don't even know where to start with this, you know, like, are we using these? Are these still relevant? Are they valid? Um, profiles are holders of databases. And EBSCO will never delete a profile for you. Uh, so, and, and I'm laughing at that because um, it really doesn't want to, and when I say it, I say we, you know, EBSCO and the, our support people and um, product managers, they really don't want to get into your EBSCO admin and start doing things because it's yours. Um, so if you had, uh, even, even with, let's say, even with Inspire, so let's say Inspire has all consumer health, and then they drop it, they say, well, we no longer want consumer health, um, then most likely these consumer health interfaces that are listed here would still be there. They would just be dead, right? So they would be empty shells. EBSCO's not going to go in and remove that. So I think it's really useful for everyone to do an interface usage. So when I first go in, um, I would actually want to say, well, what am I really using here? Some of these things are going to be inherited from Inspire. I might be using those. Other of these might be just old, um, you know, empty shells, or maybe there's some things in here that I want that I should be using and I'm not. So um, I ran a profile usage report. I want to see which ones of these profiles are used and possibly then use that information to clean up this area um, so that I can better understand uh, you know, what I have from EBSCO and, and how, how to maintain it instead of having just this stuff here. So what I did is I ran back over to report statistics. And this one's really simple. So I still went into standard usage. And instead of a database usage, I ran an interface usage. <clears throat> and I actually have um, I'll, what I'll send Kara is um, and Lisa Meadows um, some a little bit of follow up that we can send out to you. But I do have like a two minute video that shows you how to run this, so you don't have to memorize this if this is interesting to you. So interface usage report. If I want to know about it, I'm reading here. But because we're here, you don't need to. I kind of already told you what it's going to do. It's going to show me all of those interfaces. I'm going to still, you know, have my regular site, which is going to be um, Indiana State Library or your site. I want to say um, all interfaces accessed and um, pick my reporting period and the analysis level is what I'm changing. So I'm not really changing anything up here except for that uh, report type. I want to see what profile is, what are those profiles are being used? And if they're not being used, I'm going to delete them out of my system so that when I go in, I have a clean uh, system. So here's the profile usage. Once I do create that report, I have, that's the one we were looking at earlier. So um, there it is. So the interface usage, 
and I see that I have, you know, here those here's those profile names, and I did sort it. I basically sorted it by sessions. Um, and to do that, you you just pretty much highlight whatever usage you have here. I did sort filter and custom sort, and just choose um, that. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Actually, when you want to do a custom sort on just this, you highlight the headers. You highlight the headers that are there, then custom sort. And then it will show you those headers. Oh, it still is not doing it right. But um, I do this all the time. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. But you can sort it by session. It shows I show you that on my recording. And when you see that, then you can see, well, we're not getting, we're only getting one hit from this, two hits from this. And you could possibly then delete these and you will see, most likely you'll see some zeros too. Okay, like this one, you know. So if I see this zero, then maybe I need to start to think about what I wanna do with that. So I think this is a good way. This is a good one. If you are one of those ones that come in here and sign in and you look at this profile list and you say, I don't know what's going on there, Lisa. That's a good starting point. <clears throat> Okay, um, so now let's get to let, what I would call the fun reports. Um, so I just want you to remember the one, the word of analytics. So if I see analytics here and analytics here, those are your graphical reports, okay? Um, so those are gonna be the ones that you're gonna just be able to click into and see the usage right away. You're not running anything, you're not waiting for anything, and you're not dealing with the, um, the spreadsheets. So let's first do, uh, actually, since we were doing standard usage, I'll stay here and then we'll move over to that top search terms report. So if I click on standard usage, I can get the same types of reports that I was just looking at, um, most likely. So you see how database usage, remember, we had to run that report, but here I jump in and it's already there. Here are my sessions, my searches, my um, automated searches, which are all automated. There's nothing federated in EBSCO. Here's my full text, my abstract, my link out. So we kind of already been hearing those words, right? I didn't have to run it. I just came in. If you want to know um, kind of what this looks, you know, we can look at this and we can say, oh, well, this looks like it's about a year. But if you really want to know what's going on, remember, use those uh, help right within the interface here. And it's telling you right here, look at that first sentence on, this, on the um, second paragraph. This is your monthly usage for the last 13 months. So I can just take at a glance, I can see the trend within my library and most likely, uh, you, know, you know, the academic year, um, public libraries get a lot more usage. Maybe in the summer, they kind of stay the same because of summer reading or, um, still, you know, public library not, might not be as much of a dip, um, but typically a lot of times around December, you know, things will kind of slow down in the libraries and go down and maybe in the summer too, um, kind of slow down. And then it kind of picks back up again when school starts, right? And this is what this trend is here. So the summer's a little lower here and then um, starts back up and kicks back up in, uh, you know, when in August when school starts again. So I can see this trend here. I can see some numbers here. If you just want to see, I say, well, I don't care about sessions. Lisa just said that that means they opened up the database. I don't know what they did. They could have just closed it right away again. If you don't want that, you can just click it away. Um, searches, well, that's fine. They did a lot of searches, but what I really want to know is, you know, how much full text. So you see how I kind of just hid these and hit, and this really is what I want to know is are users getting to full text? Are they reading abstracts? And are they also accessing my links that I placed in the databases to get to other places? So this really is the meat of what I want to look at. And I can scroll down and here are my databases that are listed. And so I can see my sessions, my searches. Um, remember there's no federated, there's only automated. And typically this comes from discovery when you have, um, our discovery system, and you're getting those automated searches. Here's my full text, abstracts, link outs, okay? 
You can download this whole thing, but remember it's for a 13 month of usage and you can't choose that. It's just a snapshot. Also what's in here, what I think is important, there's that interface usage report. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I like this login usage because if you're not using um, Google Analytics on your website or any other kind of analytics, let's hope this loads here. Oh, let's see, I'm gonna use the back button here. And this may, I mean, to eat, there we go. Okay, so it does wanna load that. So I'll try this one more time. If not, I'll just kind of explain to you. So I want you to go in and look at that. This is gonna tell me how people are accessing my databases, um, what kind of devices they're on. So there, are they on a laptop or are, are they on a, a mobile device, um, possibly a phone? And it'll even tell you the operating systems. And here we go. So you see how I just said, hey, computer's not gonna beat me um, and just use my back button and redid it again, okay? Um, and if that doesn't work, go back five minutes later, clear your cache, whatever you need to do, um, kind of bang around the system and it should work for you. So here's my login method. So remember, I'm looking at state of Indiana. So you can see that a lot of people are just logging in using um, known IPs. This is what EBSCO sees you coming in as, okay? Um, some people are using those single sign-on, um, which is getting more and more popular where I just sign on to one thing in your library and then I'm signed into everything and then other. Um, here, remember I said, here's desktop or mobile. So if you do a big mobile push um, or if you have a mobile program or something in your library, then you maybe you know, start seeing these statistics go up a little bit. Here's my operating systems, Windows, you know, is still king, but not much, or queen, or whatever, um, but not by much. So most likely that's going to be some Apple devices and Chrome, Chromebooks in the schools. Um, and then here's some browsers. So you can see there. And then here's your different login methods. Athens is a single sign-on. This is your biggie, geolocation, and IP. So I think this is interesting just to see how users are interacting with your system. And that's the login usage report under standard usage analytics. All right, now let's go to the one that I said was um, the fun one. So the top search terms, and here we go. So this is safe, in, in my mind, this is safe for me to show you. Um, this is all of Indiana. It doesn't track it down to who put what in, right? But typically when, and I don't know what's going on here, I think maybe because of the data is so much, but let's, I might go to another library if this one, here we go. So it's a little glitch. Oh, come on. Let me see if I can refresh this. It's trying to load here. And this loads a word, that loads a word cloud. Um, so let me see. I think what I'll do is this. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm going to connect at upsco.com and I'm just typing in top search terms. This is another thing that I can send you in the follow-up, um, but this gives you a visual of what that report looks like. And I apologize. I do think, I don't know what something's going on in my system or because there's so much data, um, but in your system, let me see, I was trying to see if I can make this bigger here. Here we go. Hopefully that's a little more, a little better. So when you load that top search terms report, it does give you that word cloud. Um, and these are the words that people are literally looking, you know, putting into your search boxes. Sometimes like see this one, it might be small, but it says like EC, FIC or EC, CGN. These are going to be, you, you know, obviously someone didn't type that in. Um, those are going to be where people have chosen possibly uh, filters and then just searched, you know. So this is basically saying like ebook fiction or, you know, something else. So when you maybe those browsable features in your ebooks or others, you might see some codes in there. Um, but it's usually the funniest thing is usually people librarians will see their own terms because you're typically, you know, when you're helping a patron or when you're helping a student or doing uh, just giving a class, you use maybe the same terms over and over, right? So you see those terms. Um, and then it will tell you, like, see the interface here? 
So if you want to say, well, what are people putting in Explora versus what are people putting in um, EBSCOhost? Um, you know, that should be different because Explora typically is for younger users, possibly. Um, so you can do that. And then you'll see your top search terms here. Let me see if I, I really wanted to get this going live. And I really haven't. I'm going to tell you, I haven't had this happen um, to me. Something where it wants to load that word cloud and it's crapping out. So um, don't you love that official word crapping out? So anyway, um, I want you know all the more reason why you all should get in there and dig. And I wonder, see, yeah, I see, I think, anyway, if you want me to show it live, I can. Um, but yes, uh, th this is really the visual of it. And I will give you this whole information on also kind of how to do it. But this is really cool. And um, it also can kind of help you with your, um, you know, with your instruction or when you help patrons, if you do see huge sentences being put in here, you know, you really want to back out on those sentences. Typically you want to do simpler search terms. Um, and a lot of times you can see, sometimes you don't know that um, maybe teachers have given an assignment and all of a sudden you see a million searches on a certain topic and you're like, whoa, um, we, you know, I need to talk to that teacher because I want to be able to make sure that I help them, you know, and help their students. And so you can really get a good, good bird's eye view, depending on what type of library you're from, on what's happening in your search results. And I'm just uh, stubborn and I'm going to just try it one more time. Come on, I'm going to let, let that load up there. Nope, it's just not going to do it. So hopefully you don't have that problem. And again, I would just wait five more minutes. Um, it probably clear my cache or something or try a new browser and it would most likely it will work. But for this, for us, I don't want to waste our time. Um, but you did. I'm so glad that I at least had this visual for you. You're going to get the same view and it's really quite fun. I've even had libraries. Um, I don't know how somehow they're they grabbed this. I think they may have just grabbed even a because um, you can download it and it's just like static and like put it in a PowerPoint or something. But they actually put that on there. You know, you know, a lot of libraries, when you walk in, they have TV screens that are kind of scrolling with program information and other, and they actually had that um, top search terms uh, of like just showing, you know, so it's kind of interesting an interesting view of, of what's going on currently in the library. So the one, the last thing that I want to mention before we end, so we talked about the database usage, the standard usage, and what typically people are doing um, in standard usage, which is doing that database report. I highlighted the interface report if you did have any interest of cleaning up those profiles or just seeing what profiles are being used um, in your library. And then we looked at some of the graphicals. So we looked at the standard usage, and this one was being stubborn this morning, um, but it will work for you. Um, Hey, Nicole, uh, or Lisa, Nicole was able to get that to work, and she has a question about it. She said, it looks like the, sometimes the top frequency item isn't the biggest in the word cloud. How is that determined? So if you look here, so I think that the word cloud is, so look, read here. So sorry. So, the, so read about that, and that tells you kind of where... Um, you know, how, how that word cloud is determined or how, you know, how that is determined. So read that question mark area. Um, and because, because it's over, a, it's a rolling 1000 um, top search terms is what it is. So, so think about that. So if it's a rolling 1000, it's not necessarily a time, is it? So it could be, so 1000 searches in your library could be, um, uh, you know, could be a, a, a day, right? And then all, but it also could be three months. Um, so look at the, what the word cloud says, look, make sure that you're not filtering. Let me show this, that you're not filtering if it's all interfaces and then um, top search terms like here, this says death penalty and death penalty is, you know, down here. But if you look at the result clicks, it's, it's more. So even though death penalty, yeah, so I don't, I don't know, like to tell you the truth, why isn't gun control the biggest there? Um, 
I, I honestly don't know why, but I can tell you then how to read this, which, and we can actually ask, I'll kind of, I could find that out, but I'm sure it has something to do with the amount with the, with the rolling thousand um, and just how it's determined. And maybe if I did open this up, like I opened up the whole thing, not just this little one, because when you do download it and it comes in the full page, then maybe gun control would be the first one. So if you try that, um, yeah, if you try that, Nicole, make sure that you don't just look at this, the little, you know, the minimized version of it, do the whole, um, not the, do this one, which is the open it up. This one is actually downloading it. This one would just open it up on the whole page and then kind of double check is the first search term the biggest. I'd like to see if that's true or not. But how you would, would read this is um, the frequency of times that it was put into the the search box is this 568 i think it's kind of cl uh, cloudy then the result clicks so how they searched gun control but did they click on results so the result click should always be way more than the word itself or than the frequency itself because you're finding articles and you're click click clicking and opening them up if it's not if you see a search over here and the result clicks are way down, then that typically means they didn't find anything um, using that search term, right? Because if I do a search on depression and I don't find anything, I'm not clicking. So this is also uh, helpful to know. Uh, you can see if you can recreate it and see what you find. And then maybe you need, um, you know, it, typically it's just because the search term is, is not put in correctly, but you know, maybe you need to build up some information on that topic if a lot of people are searching for it and they're not finding anything. So lots of different ways that you can use this. Thanks, Nicole, for that question. Hopefully when we open this all the way up, it would be clearer that gun control would be the biggest on there and not the third one down. Um, so let's, and it's too bad that we can't do that here. So back to, Back to finishing up here. So database usage we did, interface usage, graphical reports we looked at, those are fun and interesting. Always use your um, questions areas. And um, if you still are unclear, then you can ask us information too. And I wanna show you on Connect where you can maybe do some other searches and get help. Um, oh, and one more thing, the counter. So counter reporting, if you, you know, if you know, you know, and most likely you have to do it, but just FYI in the library world, we have lots of different vendors. And what counter does is counter is a code of practice and it's made for vendors. Um, so Gale and EBSCO and ProQuest and, and basically counter came and it's a group of librarians that came and said, look, you guys need to come up with standardized reporting because I'm going to one admin site and getting these numbers and another admin site and getting these numbers. And I don't know, I can't really compare apples to apples here. Um, so the standard um, code of practice came and librarians are the ones making that. And uh, you can actually access, let me see if I go to counter here. Here is where you can read more about counter reporting, but be EBSCO has this in our system because we are counter compliant. So we said, yes, we want to follow counter. We want to allow our users to download counter reports where then they can, you know, contrast and compare with other vendors. So counter is usually kind of mandated, you know, from you, right, by your reporting agent, agency. Um, but you can also play around and really what counter does is it looks as looks at EBS, as EBSCO as one vendor. So when I see platform master, that means all of EBSCO. It doesn't matter if it was Explora or EBSCO host. It doesn't matter what database they used. This is just basically saying, what did EBSCO, what did you use in EBSCO? Then you would go to Gale and look for a platform master report and see all of your Gale usage. Wouldn't matter what databases. So if you might, I think it's worthy for those of you that are uh, data hungry or data interested, right? To play around with some of these counter reports, even if you don't have to uh, report using ca the counter um, practice. And it has the same kind of thing. So it does give you help here. 
Um, it has a little bit different verbiage. So item investigations and uh, title investigations, but here's your glossary of terms. And if you do need to become, not or want to, probably you wouldn't want to though, if you need to become a counter expert, there's a lot of training on the counter website that you can take. And let's see if I can get there. Um, I'm actually gonna go right here to the main site. So under guides, there's a lot of different training that you can take on the counter and read and learn a lot more about counter. Okay, so I wanted to just make sure you knew that. Um, let's see. So thanks, Nicole, for that option or you know for that information. When you open it up, it does kind of look bigger. So we looked at counter. Any questions about counter at all? Let me know. And I wanna, I definitely want to go over to. Uh, I'll actually click on glossary of terms and I'll show you where it takes me. So clicking on glossary of term. Well, uh, please, it's telling me my own website's unsafe. That's, so clicking on the glossary of terms gets me and look at how big my, <laughs> I hope everyone can read this now. I think it's at 150%. So click on glossary of terms gets me to connect. And that's the main thing I wanted to show you. So in connect, there's a couple things I want you to think about. And I am going to minimize this a little bit. I don't think we need large print. <laughs> um, so I may on connect. This is an open and free website. If I just want to find um, best practices reports, I think I think I can put that in and it'll get me there. So here. So if I just want to learn more about reporting, best practices, um, and I also can just type in something like usage report. And I'm going to get a lot of kind of all these articles about, you know, there's the database usage, there's the ebook usage, which we didn't really talk about, which is a whole kind of different little, um, you know, the different little world there. So you're getting different statistics on those ebooks. Um, here we talked about a little bit Flipster if you have that, but you can see how do I run usage reports, all these different helpful articles on user reports. The one thing I was going to show you too is please, if you haven't already done so, um, request your Connect account. The reason why that is, is there's lots of um, learning that you can do. You can sign up for e-learning paths and things, um, and you have to have a sign on. But one thing I'm going to show you is if you haven't already done so, request your account. And you shouldn't have any, we already know, if you have any problems with requesting an account, please send that to um, your Inspire team and they will push it through to me because we are kind of trying to track these. But here's where you should be able to request an account. Um, our librarians from any library in Indiana can request one. And the reason why you may wanna do so is um, this. So I'm gonna already sign in. Once I sign in to connect, I'm going to show you where you can quickly get something. Let me show you here. So my screen has changed now because I'm signed in and I'm just going to scroll down and I want to show you this EBSCO admin self-serve. So this is a little bot. I don't necessarily like these, but I wanted to show you because it's real simple. If you need to get your admin password um, because maybe you haven't logged in and now you want to, then um, First of all, if you don't want to sign in or don't have an account, don't want to make one, you can always just call the 800 number and it's, you know, somewhere down here at the bottom. There you go. Contact support, even when you're not logged in and then just ask them for your EBSCO admin account, login and password. OK, but if you do have an account and you say, well, I don't want to talk to anyone, I'd rather just so look here. So I can actually ask right here, this little bot here for an admin reset and it's going to send me an email. But guess what else I can do? I can also just ask for a standard usage report. So that would be that database usage report, the first one we looked at. Um, they're just going to give it to you on all, you know, let's see. I think for me, it's going to tell me, no, I'm not eligible to do it. But, you know, you're basically checking that and then the bot's going to ask you what else you want. Um, and I think for me, like I said, there we go. So what time period, you see? So it'll ask you a few little questions and then it'll send you the report. So even if you just want to try that out, you can. Um, 
then there's some other things here. You know, if you do want to get some more like blog communications from us or stop them, you can do that here. And then remember, I talked about EBSCO Academy with your learning, uh, additional learning. So we have a whole live session on um, reporting if you want to come to that. Um, and then, oh, I see we're at time, so I do want to stop. Um, so thanks, Kara, for letting me know that that letting everyone know that their certificate is there. And I do want to just stop and allow anyone that's still here to ask any specific questions. Um, and then we can even take some questions offline. Remember, I'm your trainer. So if you say, well, Lisa, I really need to know how to do this. I've got to get this done. Um, and I got a little bit from what happened today, but I need a lot more help. Then I'm just gonna offer um, Kara and team to that I, you know, ljones at epsco.com and we can get together. Um, have a mini session um, and kind of go over what you need, okay? Because I know that reports can be um, just a little daunting, you know, but I don't think they need to be. Thank you so much, Lisa. This has been great. I've learned so much. I'm sure everybody else has too. Um, we do have a request um, link for a certificate. So if you would like to have a certificate, uh, please click on that and fill that out for me and I'll get you the certificate soon. Uh, does anybody have any last minute questions for Lisa? Yeah, okay, thank you everybody. Remember um, our recordings are listed and then you're gonna be sent out this recording. And then yes. if you do, if you, if you have any suggestions for future sessions, 